shrill. What am I doing? I'm hypothetical conditional sentence. What is it? Soothing. Take fancy. Purring. <laughs> it is not beers. It is. Then this would be called. I am nursing this remote. Bristling. Porcupine. Quills. Goosebumps. Offended. Trembling. Nasty. Nasty. Just pay attention on the pronunciation. It's okay. <laughs> vulgar. Please don't use vulgar language. Terrier. Different strokes for different fox. Fetch. Commotion. It is not commotion. It's high time dodo. A lorry and an eaglet. As dead as a dodo. Snail mail. <gasps> Paw. What? Hello my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to this channel. Today we are going to learn Chapter 2 The Pool of Tears Part 10 So let's start without wasting further time Not like cats cried the mouse in a shrill passionate voice Now here what is the meaning of shrill? Shrill means high and unpleasant so shrill voice means high and unpleasant voice. Now look at this man. This man is plugging his ears with his fingers. Now what is this plugging ears with fingers? Now see, I am plugging my ears with my fingers. What am I doing? I'm plugging my ears with my fingers. Generally, my sister shouts in a shrill voice. Means in a high and unpleasant voice and I also plug my ears with my fingers like this now look at this there is a shrill voice so this man is plugging his ears with his fingers he doesn't like the shrill voice or I would say he cannot tolerate the shrill voice so that's why he's plugging his ears with his fingers like this I think like this <laughs> or whatever shrill passionate voice now what is this passionate passionate means showing very strong feelings now look at this lady this lady is passionate about writing a book means she's showing very strong feelings to write a book now look at her by looking at her itself we can say that she is passionate about writing a book similarly I am passionate about learning English. What about you? I hope you are also passionate about learning English, aren't you? Yes, I hope you are. Would you like cats if you were me? Now what is this if you were me? If you were me is a conditional sentence and which type of conditional sentence it is? It is a hypothetical conditional sentence. What is it? It is a hypothetical conditional sentence and now what is this hypothetical conditional sentence hypothetical conditional sentence means now see the mouse is trying to say if you were me yani ki agar aap meri jagah hote yani ki agar aap main hote yani now see this this mouse is saying that if alice was the mouse so but this cannot be possible alice cannot be the mouse so how is this possible no, it is not possible. But the mouse is just imagining that if Alice was the mouse, then would you like cats? That's what the mouse is asking. So, if you were me, so what is this called? Hypothetical conditional sentence. So I can say, if you were in my shoes, if you were in my shoes. Similarly, this, this mouse is also trying, trying to say, if you were me. Agar ab meri jage hote means it's a hypothetical conditional sentence. Alice cannot be a mouse, but the mouse is just imagining that Alice is the mouse. Then would she like cats? That's what the mouse is imagining. So now let's move forward. And I hope you got hypothetical conditional sentence. Now let's move forward. Well, perhaps not, said Alice in a soothing tone. Now what is the soothing? Soothing means to make calmer. Now I am talking to you in a soothing tone, isn't it? And what is soothing? 
Soothing means to make calmer. Soothing means to make calmer. Now, the birds chirping and the water falling. Isn't it a soothing sound? And soothing means to make calmer. I hope you got it. Now let's move forward. Now, look at this picture. This mother is trying to soothe this baby. What is she trying to do? She's trying to make the baby calm. Means she's trying to soothe the baby. Earlier this baby was crying. It was crying earlier. It was crying earlier. It was crying, crying earlier. Now, why did I use it here? Why did I say it was crying here earlier? Now, I used it over here because I don't know whether the baby is a male or female. If I knew that it was a male or female, then I would use he or she accordingly. But I don't know whether this baby is a male or female. So what should I use? I should use it. Now, Alice also had used it for the mouse because she did not know whether the mouse is a male or female. So that's why she used it for the mouse. And here also, I also don't know whether the baby is a male or female. So I used it for the baby. It might sound, you know, uh, awkward, but this is the way how it is. It was crying. This is the way how it is. You can't change it like this or like that or anyway, according to your own pleasure. Now see, now let's move forward. Don't be angry about it. And yet, I wish I could show you our cat. Dina, I think you'd take a fancy to cats if you... If you could only see her now here. What is the meaning of take a fancy? Take a fancy means to start liking very much. To start liking very much. Now, look at this picture. Here, this boss is taking a fancy to this lady. What is she doing? She is taking a fancy to this lady. And what does it mean? It means this boss started liking this lady very much. Means this boss started liking this lady very much. So this is called taking a fancy. What is it called? Taking a fancy. And I would say for example, um, I am taking a fancy to my brother. Earlier I would not like him. I thought he was a monkey of Baner Ghatta or something. I would not know what he is doing. Monkey of Baner Ghatta. He would do something, something here and there. He would take my things or I would say snatch my things and throw it somewhere or somewhere. I would consider him the monkey of Baner Ghatta. Although I don't know what is this Baner Ghatta's monkeys. But I simply would call him the monkey of Baner Ghatta as a fancy. Now, but nowadays, I am taking a fancy to my brother. Means, I'm st I started to like him very much. I am taking a fancy to my brother. Means, I started liking him very much. I hope you got it. If you could see her. She is such a dear quiet thing. Now here, why did Alice use her for the cat? and it for the mouse and why did I use it for the baby? Now, Alice used her for the cat because she knows that the cat is a female. It's not a male or something. It is a female. Alice knows that. So that's why Alice used her. But in the case of the mouse, Alice didn't know whether the mouse is a male or female. That's why she used it. And I also don't know whether the baby is a male or female. So that's why I used it. What did I use? I used it. I hope you got it. She is such a dear quiet thing. Now again she used she. Why did she use she? Because she knows that the cat is a female. But in the case of the mouse, she didn't know whether the mouse is a male or female. 
So that's why she used she for the cat and it for the mouse. Now Alice went on half to herself as she as she swam lazily about in the pool and she sits purring so nicely by the fire. Now here, what is this purring? Purring means to make a continuous low sound that shows pleasure. You might have seen that cats purr. Means you might have seen that cats are purring. You might have seen that. I have seen that. My brother has seen that and my sister has also seen that. I hope you've also seen that. Anyway, purr. If you have heard, then you might be knowing the meaning of purr. But here, purr means like to make a continuous low sound which brings pleasure to you. Generally cats or I would say that animals do it. Let me try to act as a cat and try to purr. I think I'm purring or whatever. My sister is very good at purring. Moreover, she's just like a cat of Dina. She's just like Dina. This Dina or whatever. I think it sounds like this. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Licking her paws and washing her face. Now what is this paws? Paws is the foot of animals. Now here the has been used two times. Please ignore this mistake. And I cut this b the. I cut this b. This is this is no b the here. Ah, uh, yes. Now the foot of animals, like dogs, cats, bear, bears, not bears. It is the correct pronunciation of this word b a r s is bears. What is it? Bears, not bears. Many people pronounce it as bears. But it is not bears, it is bears. What is it? Bears. I hope you got it. Now, paws is the foot of animals like cats, dogs and bears. Now, the foot of animals such as a dog has a foot. Now look at this leopard. This leopard also has foot like this part. This part. This part is called the paw of the leopard. This is the paw of the leopard. This leopard I think is going to pounce on that poor little thing or whatever. Now, now this is uh, the paw of the leopard. What is this? The paw. Similarly the foot of dogs, cats and bears is called paw. What is it called? Paw. If I were an animal then I would have four legs then this would be one of my legs and this also would be one of my legs and the other two as you know. Now then this would be called, this portion would be called paw. What would it be called? Paw. What would it be called? Paw. But since I'm not an animal and I am a human, so this portion is called palm. What is it called? Palm. But if I were an animal, if I were an animal, then this portion would be called paw. Just pay attention here. I used if I were an animal. Now see, this is also a hypothetical conditional sentence. I hope you remember that. If not, then you can just go back and know the meaning of and when you understand the meaning of hypothetical conditional sentence then you can come back and we'll continue the story. Anyways, now let's move forward. Washing her face and she is such a nice soft thing to nurse. Now, what is the meaning of to nurse? To nurse means Hold in a loving way. Now see, I'm nursing this remote. I'm, I'm nursing this remote. Generally, mothers nurse babies. And for example, I can say, now see, I'm nursing this remote and pen. 
I'm nursing this remote and the pen. I'm holding it in a loving way. And you know, my brother is such a cute little thing to nurse. But once you know him really, or once he gets angry with you, you will know that he's the monkey of Baner Khatta. <laughs> anyway, now see, hey, my brother is such a dear, quiet thing to nurse. I think if you would also get a chance to nurse him, you would really love him. But in your dreams, because really he's, he's still a very dear, quiet thing to nurse. But when he gets angry, he's not as such very dear and quiet little thing. But still, I would say he's a very good thing to nurse. Like, see, I'm nursing this remote. I am nursing this remote. What am I doing? I'm nursing this remote. Now, let me tell you one more thing about this nurse. You generally, you might have observed that in, the, that in a hospital also, there is a nurse who will be taking care of patients and doing other work also. Now, that is also a nurse, but that nurse is used as a noun. Now, pay attention, that nurse, I can say there is a nurse in a hospital. Now nurse, here nurse is used as a noun. But here to nurse, to nurse is used as a verb. Nurse is used as a verb. Here nurse is used as a verb. So just uh, note down the difference between noun and verb of the word nurse. I hope you got it. Now let's move forward. And she is such a capital one for catching mice. Now here, what is this capital? This capital means excellent or I would say positions or I would say positions. But here I think she has used it as excellent means she's trying to say she is such a excellent one for catching mice now capital i hope you got the meaning of capital and now i would like to give you an example like my sister is such a capital one for troubling others my sister is such a capital one for troubling others means once you know her once she gets to her angry mood she will be a capital one for troubling others in any way in any way she's a capital one for troubling others means she's very excellent at troubling others she's really excellent at troubling others now now let's move forward now again i haven't highlighted this word mice but just for a reminder that i that i have already explained to you the difference between mouse and mice and I hope you remember it. If not, then the link is in the description box. Now let's move forward. Oh, I beg your pardon, cried Alice again. For this time, the mouse was bristling all over and she felt certain it must be really offended. Now here, what is the meaning of bristling? Bristling means of hair to stand up or to react angrily means bristling means when the hair stand up or I would say to react angrily so that is called bristling what is it called bristling now look at this picture here this leopard is trying to pounce on this porcupine is bristling its hair so that the leopard won't be able to pounce on this porcupine. Now, these kind of things, these hairs, you can see these stiff hairs which are like needles. These are called quills. These are quills of the porcupine. So the porcupine is bristling its hair so that the leopard won't be able to pounce on this porcupine. Means this porcupine is making its hair to stand up straight like needles so that when the leopard pounces on this uh, porcupine it will get killed 
or I would say it will die and this pocket of a pine's life will be saved. I hope you got it. Now, let me give you another example. When my sister enters the room and she looks angrily at me, then I start bristling. I consider myself as a porcupine and start bristling. Means my hair stand up in fear. I get really fearful because she's not a dear quiet thing to nurse just like my brother. And you know, this kind of thing which is bristling of hair when your hair stand up out of fear. So that is called goosebumps. I really get goosebumps or I would say my hairs get bristled when my sister looks at me angrily. Even at her angry glance I get angry. And what is glance? Glance means like this. Look, I'm glancing at you. I'm looking here and now I'm glancing at you. I glanced at you, didn't I? So that is called glance. What is that called? Glance. I hope you could. Now let's move forward. Now here. What is the meaning of offended? Offended means to upset somebody. Now, and you know, when I react in this way, means when I bristle my hair, my sister acts as if she's offended. Means she acts as if she, as if I have upset her. So she acts as if I have, uh, uh, I have offended her. And I take the opportunity and run out of the room to save myself from her angry, angry glances. Glance, glances. I hope you got the meaning of offend. Now let's move forward. We won't talk about her anymore. If you'd rather not, we indeed, indeed. Now here, what is indeed? Indeed, I've already explained it to you, but let me tell it to you again. Indeed means certainly, or I would say surely. We certainly, or I would say we surely. Now let's move forward. Cried the mouse who was trembling down to the end of his tail. Now what is the meaning of trembling? Trembling means to shake with fear or cold. Now, <laughs> look at this lady. She's trembling with fear. Now look at me. I'm also trembling because it's quite cold over here. Trembling. I was just trembling. Now see, I'm tr I was trembling with fear. Sometimes when a brother comes and glances at me angrily, bristling, and I hope you know the meaning of bristling, then I start trembling. And what is trembling? Trembling means to shake with fear, or I would say cold. Now let's move forward. <sighs> As if I would talk on such a subject, our family always hated cats. Nasty, low, vulgar things. Don't let me hear the name again. Now here, what is this nasty? Now, what is the meaning of nasty? Nasty means very bad or unpleasant. What does nasty mean? Nasty means very bad or unpleasant. For example, Ria is a nasty little student means she's a very bad or unpleasant student. Now, now let me remark on the pronunciation of nasty. Some people say it as nasty and some people say it as nasty. But what is the correct pronunciation? Let me tell you. On the same topic, my sister and I were fighting. My sister was saying, my brother is nasty. But I was saying my brother is nasty. I was saying that my brother is nasty. But my sister was saying that my brother is nasty. Just pay attention on the pronunciation. Then it was a real fight. It was commotion. And what is commotion? That will come to know. 
uh, let me tell you that commotion means loud noise loud noise so that is called commotion it was a commotion there i told that my that my brother is nasty and my sister told that my brother that that my brother is nasty now then my mother came and solved the problem she said that in british english it is said as nasty but in american english it is said as nasty nasty i hope you got the difference nasty and nasty you can say it in both ways but if you say nasty it means you're speaking if you pronounce it in american english but in british english we pronounce it as nasty so my sister and i both were correct now let's move forward low vulgar things now what is this vulgar vulgar means rude or rude not polite or well behaved for example i can say rude not polite or well behaved vulgar means rude not polite or well behaved now generally i have observed that in the comment box many people write vulgar things in vulgar words so if you want to give feedback then please write it in a pleasant way means you can write it in a polite way the same thing can be written in a polite way instead of a vulgar way isn't it so you can write the same thing in a polite way i'm not saying to stop giving us feedbacks about our week sections i'm telling you that, that you're free to give us feedbacks on our week sections but please give it in a polite way so that we can understand what are you talking about if you write many vulgar things then how will you understand what is the thing you really want us to improve if you write it in a, it in a polite way we will understand what is the thing we we should improve so that's a little request from my side to you but in this let's move forward and yes one more question i wanted to ask you in way do you like my videos or my mother's videos me and my mother are confused who likes more videos who likes whose more videos so please write in the comment box anyway now let's move forward but please don't use vulgar language please put it in a polite manner and in a constructive language because we are just trying to improve that who that who needs more improvement we just wanted to want to know for our knowledge that what who likes which videos are the most best so that we can upload those kind of videos more anyway now let's move forward i want indeed said alice in a great hurry to change the subject of conversation and now i already explained to you the meaning of indeed if not then here i have already explained it to you but again let me tell you indeed means certainly or i would say surely now let's move forward subject of conversation are you are you fond of of dogs the mouse did not answer so alice went on eagerly now what is this eagerly eagerly means strong desire to do or have means i'm waiting eagerly for the summer vacation to start you know why because my mother has planned that in the summer vacation we are going to our native place since the last two years because of covid 19 we could not go but today but now in this year we are planning to go to our native place so we are really eagerly waiting for the day to come when we will go from bangalore to our native place and you know i'm eagerly waiting for that day and don't you think that there will be shortage of videos when we go we will be uploading videos now now look at this baby i think it's parents its parents because i don't know whether the baby is a male or female i hope you got it i 
its parents might have told him that they were going outside or were going to give lollipop or something to this baby. So this baby is eagerly waiting. And I would say this baby is eager to have it. This baby is eager to go out. And I would say this baby is eager to have chocolate or lollipop or whatever. <laughs> now look at this baby. This baby is so eager. Similarly, my sister and my brother are eager for the summer vacation to start. Now let's move forward. There is such a nice little dog near our house. I should like to show you a little bright eyed terrier. Now what is this terrier? Terrier is a kind of dog and it looks like this. Now look at this terrier. This is a terrier. This is a terrier and this is also a terrier. Now look at this. This is also a terrier and this is also a terrier. One of our neighbors also have a pet dog which is a terrier. You know it's all the many people find a terrier to be amazing, awesome, beautiful and all that. But I find but I'm scared when I even look at the long hairs of a terrier dog or any other dog. I'm scared of dogs. I start bristling and and you know and then I would say like I start trembling when I see a dog, especially a bulldog or something. But anyways, I also hate this kind of dog terrier. Not only terriers, I don't like dogs at all because I feel scared of them. And, and do you like dogs? Write in the comment box. Now anyway, this terrier is still beautiful many for many people. But different strokes for different fox. And I hope you know the meaning of that idiom. If not, then the link is in the description box. Now let's move forward. You know, with all such long curly brown hair and it will fetch things and it will fetch things when you throw them and it will sit up and beg for its dinner and all sorts of things. I know. Yeah, what is the meaning of fetch? Fetch means to go and to go and bring back. Now for example, if I throw a ball and my sister goes, takes the ball and brings it back to me. So I would say my sister fetched the ball. Now similarly, I was just trying to say that if you throw a ball or anything, then the terrier will go, take it and bring it back to you. So it will, it will fetch things if you throw them at him. And it will sit up. Now what is this sit up? Now look at this dog. This dog is sitting up. Now look at this dog. This, this terrier is sitting up. What is it doing? It is sitting up. It is sitting up straight or I would say it is sitting up. Now let's move forward and I hope you got it. And all sorts of things. I I can't remember half of them and it belongs to a farmer, you know. And he says it's so useful. It's worth a hundred pounds. Now what is the meaning of worth? Worth means the value of something or somebody. A hundred pounds. What is the meaning of pounds? Pounds is the unit of money in Britain. Means like in India, it is rupees. One rupee, two rupees, three rupees, hundred rupees. Similarly, in Britain, the unit of money is pounds. Or I would say pound. Now, like one pound, two pounds, three pounds, hundred pounds. Now, what is the farmer trying to say? And he says it's so useful. It's worth a hundred pounds. Means the value of the dog is a hundred pounds. Now, let me give you another example about this sentence. You know, my, my brother is worth one pound. And my sister is worth half a pound. You know, my brother is worth my brother is worth one pound and my sister is worth half a pound. <laughs> Isn't it funny? And I think it is really funny that my sister is worth 
half a pound. My brother is worth one pound. <laughs> it is funny. And now let's move forward. He says it it kills all the rats and oh dear. I don't know how many times this Alice has used this word oh dear. I don't know how many times has she. I think it is her pet word. Pet word means the word you generally say. For example, my father's pet word is it's okay. It's okay is my father's pet word. Means he generally use it all the time. And you know in the such a tone, in a soothing tone like this. It's okay. <laughs> like, like, it's okay. No, no, Harika, don't fight with Keshu. If he takes your toys, no problem. It's okay. It's okay. Like that he says always in a sentence around three times he'll say, he'll say this word accordingly. Similarly, I think Alice's pet word is oh dear. She says this oh dear all the time. And I also say sometimes. Now, why did Alice use he for the farmer and it for the dog? Because Alice knows that the farmer is a male. But Alice doesn't know whether the dog is a male or female. Now here, he refers to the farmer, but it refers to the terrier dog. To the terrier dog, she used he because she knows that the farmer is a male, but she used it because she doesn't know whether the terrier dog is a male or female. So that's why she used it for the terrier. Now let's move forward. And oh dear, cried Alice in a sorrowful tone. Now here, what's the meaning of sorrowful? Sorrowful means very sad. Sorrow also means very sad. Now look at me, I'm talking to you in a sorrowful tone. But I don't like sorrowful tones. Now, she spoke. She said this thing in a sorrowful tone, means in a very sad tone. And I hope you got it. I'm afraid I've offended it again. And I hope you know the meaning of offended. If not, then you can go back, understand the meaning and come back. Now let's move forward. For the mouse was swimming of, was was swimming away from her as hard as it could go and making quite a commotion in the pool as it went. Now what is this commotion? For But first of all I want to say that it is not commotion. It is commotion. It's not commo. It's commo. It's commotion not commotion. Generally people think that this C O M is calm and this and this motion is motion so they say that it is commotion but it is not commotion it's commotion though it may sound odd but this is the way how it is this whole world is odd isn't it now this is pronounced as commotion not commotion this is pronounced as commotion now let's move forward commotion means great noise or excitement now look at these, now look at these children, they are forming a commotion at a birthday party or what? I don't know, but they are really forming a huge commotion, isn't it? When my sister came to know that we are going to our native place in our summer holidays, then it was, it was quite a commotion. My sister started dancing and singing a song or whatever and my brother started taking two toys in his hands one said Batman and another is a cheetah and then he starts dancing like this hurray, 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 or something and they just do a loud commotion or I would say they do a the house becomes a or I would say it's a commotion all around I hope you got the meaning of commotion anyways let's move forward in the pool as it as it went so 
she called softly after it. Mouse dear, do come back again and we won't talk about cats or dogs either if you don't like them. When the mouse heard this, it turned round and swam slowly back to her. Its face was quite pale with passion, Alice thought, and it said in a low, trembling voice, let us get to the shore and then I'll tell you my history and you'll understand why it is I hate cats and dogs. Not yet. What is the meaning of trembling? The meaning of trembling, I have already explained this to you. If not, then you can go back, understand the meaning of trembling and then come back. Now, what is the meaning of shore? The, the difference between shore and bank, I have already explained it to you in my first video of Alice in Wonderland. But still, you might have, have, you might have forgotten it. So let me explain to you the meaning of shore once again. Shore means the land at the edge of the sea or lake. Shore means the land at the edge of the sea or lake. Now you can see for example, this is the sea and this is its edge. So what is this called? This is called shore. So this is the shore of the sea. So I can say I love to play at the shore of the sea but I am always scared about the waves of the sea you know and if you still don't know or I would say if you still did not understand then you can then the link is in the description box and now again now let's move forward you know it was high time to go for now here what is high time what is the meaning of high time? High time means the appropriate time for something. Now, high time means the appropriate time for something. Means what is the appropriate time for something? Like I can say, um, it is high time to learn vocabulary words, phrasal words and all that. Or I would say it's high time to learn English means it's the appropriate time or it's the right time to learn English vocabulary words phrasal verbs and all that now let's move forward it was high time to go for the pool was getting quite crowded with the birds and animals that had fallen into it there were a duck and a dodo, a lorry and an eaglet. Now here, and I hope, now here, I hope you know what is a duck. But what is this dodo? Dodo, this dodo. Now look at this kind of bird. It is extinguished, you know, it is extinguished. But this kind of bird is called dodo. What is it called? Dodo. And as it is extinguished, there's an idiom derived from it because it is totally extinguished. So, and the idiom is as dead as a dodo. As dead as a dodo, which means no longer effective or interesting. Now, I can say that in the near future, using snail mail will be as dead as a dodo, means it will be no longer effective or interesting means in the near future snail mail will be as dead as a dodo means it will be no longer effective or interesting now i hope you got the meaning of dodo and as well as this idiom related to dodo as dead as a dodo and let me explain to you the meaning of snail mail snail mail means when you write a letter and post it and it, and it goes so that is called snail mail but nowadays we use phones and sorry whatsapps mails and i would say whatsapps emails and all that to communicate but why is it called snail mail it is called snail mail because it 
goes very slowly because from one post office it will go to another post office and from there it will go to another post office similarly it will go very slowly slowly like a snail now you can see a snail also goes very slowly it takes a lot of time for it to go from one place to another place so that is called snail that kind of animal which moves very slowly like a snail now see the snail moves very very slowly slowly so that's why it is called as snail mail because the snail mail takes long time a snail mail takes longer time than email because an email you will send it it will reach there instantly but in the case of snail mail it will take time for it to reach the other person so that is called snail mail what is it called snail mail now let's move forward now what is a lorry what is a lorry now you can say this kind of bird this kind of bird is called lorry i like a lorry do you like a lorry write in the comment box now this kind of bird is called lorry what is it called lorry now that's my favorite and an eaglet now what is an eaglet eaglet means the child or i would say young eagle a young eagle is called eaglet now look at this here the eagle is trying to feed its kids so the kids of an eagle is called eaglet eaglet what is it called eaglet now let's move forward and several other curious creatures now what is this creatures creatures creature is a living thing such as an animal bird fish insect but not a plant means a creature is a living thing such as an animal bird fish insect but not a plant i hope you got it now let's move forward alice led the way and the whole party swam to the shore <sighs> to be continued if you have reached the end of this video i am sure it has added a few new vocabularies to your english just try to use these words in your daily life conversations it will give a boost to your english level you will get a little extra confidence while speaking see you in the next part of this series called alice in wonderland stay blessed bye bye see you in the next video